Okay, um, so the recording is on, and uh, thank you everyone for joining the EDGE PTG session today. It's April 11, 2024, and we are starting with a presentation from INRIA, uh, given by Helen about their um, choreographic infrastructure as code project. So I will give the uh, the microphone to Helen to guide us through the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. So everyone seems to know me uh, in the video, but I will do uh, as it is recorded. I, I will do as if uh, no one is knowing me. So I'm Hélène Coulon. Uh, I'm a French associate uh, professor at uh, the IMT Atlantic, which is a uh, a famous French uh, research, well, sorry, engineering school uh, in France. And I'm also a member of the Stack Research Group uh, at INRIA. And today I'm going to present uh, a set of works uh, I've done with many people. I, I will talk uh, about uh, a person involved in this work uh, later. Uh, so the title of the uh, of the talk is toward choreographic infrastructure as code and uh, i will try to be as clear as possible uh, uh, through, through this presentation so i, I will first try uh, to start with some concepts that you know very well probably in this uh, working group so uh, the concept of infrastructure as code so uh, the basic idea is that uh, now everything uh, or almost everything is infrastructure code, uh, even a simple web application, because you have to provision some bucket to store data, some Kubernetes cluster if you have a, a, a containerized uh, uh, microservices application, etc. And uh, because um, uh, the capacity and the complexity of uh, infrastructures uh, grow, uh, through times, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ad system administrators and uh, developers thought that it would be great to handle infrastructure as complex codes, meaning using uh, good uh, practices such as uh, software engineering and, and languages to write infrastructure and to uh, uh, make infrastructure evolve through time. So a few definitions and uh, basic examples to start. So I will consider an example with um, three uh, resources that I call A, B, and C. So a resource uh, in this uh, talk is any piece of software to deploy and maintain. So it could be uh, microservices, infrastructure, pieces of infrastructure, etc. So what I will call a life cycle uh, is uh, uh, the set of possible states uh, for a given resource. Uh, what I will call a dependency is when a resource requires some information from another. For instance, in the above example, A is using B and B is using C. So these are dependencies. Uh, I will call uh, a goal or a target state, uh, the state that I want uh, to reach uh, for my uh, for my uh, infrastructure. So for instance, I would like to switch the version of the resource C to version 2.3 and then go back to a running state. This is a, an example of a goal. And finally, I will call a plan uh, the set, uh, the sequence of actions to move from the current state to the target state. So let's take a first very basic example so let's consider that I have a very limited life cycle uh, for my resources, which is I can turn on a resource or turn off a resource. Um, and now le let's see uh, what kind of plan we can do with this uh, life cycle uh, expressivity. So the first very naive uh, solution to update the resource C to version 2.3 is first to turn off A, then to turn off B because B is using C and A is using B. And then turn off C, update C, turn on B, turn on A. So this is a very naive way of uh, uh, doing an update of the resource C. 
And this set of actions, so turn off A, turn off B, et cetera, uh, this is what we call a plan. Uh, so in this example, we can see that what is actually happening is that we have a propagation of the turn off uh, action. So we need to turn off the full system to then update C and then turn on everything uh, uh, again. So another example, which is uh, more, uh, let's say, smarter. Uh, OK, I, I have the same uh, uh, assumption. So I have only turn on and turn off of the life cycle. But this time, I'm going to start the new version of C that I call C prime, then turn on a proxy uh, that will uh, intercept a request from resource B to resource C and load balance the, the requests 50% on C and 50% on C prime, for instance. It could be another uh, choice, right? Then when I consider that C prime is running uh, perfectly well, I can turn off C, turn off the proxy, and now I have the new version of C prime without turning off A and B. Uh, this solution though, I have to add uh, additional reverse proxy and also you have additional costs because you have uh, for a temporary period two instances of uh, C. But you do not have any downtime. Uh, so this is another example, okay. And I have a third example and this is just to illustrate that uh, what you can do in the life cycle is actually quite important. Let's imagine that now I can, I can have an intermediate state in my life cycle, which is pausing the service. In this case, my uh, plan could be first to pause A, pause B, turn off C, update C, turn on B again, and turn on A. And this is another example. So uh, you have some kind of downtime, but you don't have to turn off a and B, but you probably will have shorter execution times because it's uh, probably much shorter to pause A and B than to restart A and B. So these are examples of plans. And the second part that I want to introduce before diving into the details of my work is about the declarative approaches when doing infrastructure as code. Um, so, the idea of a declarative approach is that uh, we do not want the DevOps to write plans, so to write the set of uh, instructions uh, to move from one state to another. We would like that to be automated, so you have many existing DevOps tools having declarative approach, so the idea is that uh, the tool will automatically compute the set of actions to perform to move from the current state to the desired state. So what would be uh, expressed is, for example, I want to switch C to V version 2.3 and go back to a running set. Okay, so I, I will uh, try uh, through this uh, presentation to uh, answer three motivations uh, in the work uh, I, I'm going to present. So the first motivation is, um, what if we put as much flexibility in the life cycle as required? So meaning you have a programmable life cycle, you can um, uh, put uh, as much uh, intermediate state as the pose we, we've seen before as you need. And um, the associated research questions are, uh, will we have shorter execution time as illustrated with the pose mechanism before? And will it be possible to keep a declarative approach if we do that? Because by introducing programmable lifecycle, you also introduce more complexity. The second motivation is, uh, um, is it possible to offer um, a fine grain? So I will <laughs> explain through the talk what, what does that mean, but a fine grain programming support to write a life cycle and dependencies between life cycles of uh, software entities. Uh, in particular, in, in my work, I'm interested in uh, introducing more parallelism and concurrency to, uh, to reduce the execution time when deploying or maintaining uh, infrastructures. 
uh, with the same research questions as before. So can I have shorter execution times and can I keep a declarative approach again because this will increase the complexity. And finally, the third motivation, which is probably the, the one uh, particularly related to edge uh, issues, uh, uh, is that uh, existing declarative infrastructure as code uh, solutions are mainly uh, designed in a centralized uh, fashion. So it means that the, um, the plan uh, so the set of uh, instructions to apply to move from the current state to the desired state are uh, uh, coordinated by a central entity. And the actions are sent to the distant nodes, but you still need this central en entity to uh, make sure that uh, the overall coordination uh, is uh, behaving well. And so the third motivation is to um, be able to have a decentralized infrastructure as code. And this is uh, particularly interesting, for instance, uh, when you have a, a cross-functional or cross-geographical DevOps organizations, but also when you have some frequent uh, network disconnections, such as uh, at the edge or in uh, cyber physical systems. So in this talk, uh, I'm going to present uh, first what uh, we call the Concerto reconfiguration model. So you can see Concerto as a, a coordination uh, model for DevOps uh, uh, procedures, but I will explain that. And then I will explain how we uh, make a Concerto choreography. So I will introduce what is a choreography and how we do that. And finally, um, I will present a recent work on uh, uh, how we've done declarative choreographies with uh, a tool that we call Ballet. And I will conclude. Okay, so before uh, explaining Concerto, I will do an unusual thing. And uh, I do that uh, because I hope presenting first some results will motivate uh, you to listen to uh, the rest of the talk. So uh, here I present some uh, results uh, on the deployment of uh, an OpenStack uh, system. So it is a minimal OpenStack system. Uh, so it's composed of 11 components and 36 services. Uh, and we compare the deployment time uh, to Cola and Cibol. So Cola and Cibol is a production tool to deploy OpenStack. And we've done the same deployment with a Concerto and a, a concurrent uh, solution in the academic literature that is called Iolus. Iolus is something very close to Juju, uh, for instance. Um, and so what you can uh, see is that uh, uh, with Concerto, we are able to win uh, around 70% of the execution time when deploying uh, OpenStack. So why is that? Um, it's because of the uh, level of parallelism and concurrency that we are able to offer in within Concerto. So here you can see uh, uh, by the way, can, can you see my uh, my pointer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so here you can see um, the um, the Gantt diagram uh, of the execution by using Ansible. So with Ansible, what is actually happening is that each role will be applied one after the other. So in uh, OpenStax, you will have first the facts then common uh, set of uh, dependencies that are required by all roles. And then HA proxy, uh, memcached, if I remember correctly, MariaDB, et cetera. And you have to deploy all the roles one after the other like that. Um, with Iolus, which is closer to Juju, as I said, um, you can introduce a bit more uh, parallelism uh, because of the um, uh, the level of the dependencies between uh, the tasks that have to be applied within uh, uh, the roles. And with Concerto, we increase a bit further uh, the level of parallelism because in each role, so for instance, Nova here, 
you have a few lines for Nova because we are able to divide the actions to perform to deploy Nova and execute them uh, say, uh, concurrently. Okay, and the same for Neutron, for instance, or MyAdvi. So now, oh yes, I have another example. So another example is um, uh, it's an example extracted from an, an OpenStack summit where they uh, use uh, the Galera cluster of uh, MariaDB database, and they switch from a centralized MariaDB to a decentralized one. So it means that you need to uh, reconfigure the the running centralized MariaDB to become a master in the Galera cluster, and additionally replace, uh, sorry, uh, deploy uh, the new worker nodes. And so you can see again that compared to Ansible, we win around uh, 50 persons, 40, per 40 or 50 persons. So now I will give some details on how uh, we do that and what is the the language, the concerto language. Uh, so the idea is to introduce as much parallelism as possible, but to be sure that the coordination uh, is safe and that the dependencies will be will be um, uh, guaranteed. So the first thing to do, it is a bit like writing a role in Ansible. You as a developer, you will have to write uh, what is called a, a, a control component. A component. Uh, and this is how it looks like uh, by using a graphical notation. So what we do is that we are going to, to have a programmable lifecycle for my software entity. So it does not represent the functional code of the software entity, but the lifecycle also. Uh, control aspect, uh, controllable aspect of my software entity. So in this example, uh, it's a server and I have decided to, uh, uh, to have uh, two kind of uh, behaviors uh, with my lifecycle, which is I can install my server or suspend my server. But as it is programmable, I could add anything I want. So posing my server or anything. And I will um, uh, define the set of tasks uh, required to actually uh, apply the behavior. So for instance, to apply install, I will uh, apply the green arrows, okay? And in the green arrows, I will put the, the real code. So like uh, installing a package, uh, pulling a Docker image or anything. And here is a first level of parallelism because I can uh, trigger uh, multiple tasks simultaneously uh, if I consider as a developer that I can do, for instance, a, a, a file configuration at the same time that, that I do a Docker pool. So um, this internal, that's what we call the internal net, is a modeling of the life cycle of my uh, software entity. And in addition to that, I have external interfaces uh, because this, uh, as a role in Ansible, this uh, component, this uh, life cycle, uh, will be later uh, connected or com combined with other uh, components. So what does it mean? So I have two kinds of uh, interfaces. So uh, a use port, which is this semicircle uh, notation, which means that uh, this sub part of the life cycle will have to use an external database. And this sub part of the life cycle will have to use the IP address of an external database. And you also have provide ports represented by the small uh, dark uh, dots. And so it means that in this uh, part of the life cycle, so in this case, uh, the running state, I uh, provide a service uh, for my server. And this service will then uh, be used by another component. And so the, the second type of interfaces I've already talked about, it's this behavior concepts. 
uh, which is a way to hide uh, the, the details of the internal net. So instead saying uh, you can do uh, this task and this task uh, simultaneously, then this, this task and this task, I just say to the external that you have an installation procedure and a suspension procedure. So uh, Concerto is written in Python. So this is how uh, it looks like from a user perspective. Um, so the, the component uh, developer, the, the developer of the piece of software or the piece of infrastructure uh, will define the set of places by uh, unique identifiers uh, as a strings. You have an initial place uh, where to start if uh, the, the component uh, does not exist. A set of uh, behaviors, so installation and sus suspension in this case, and a set of transitions. So the transitions are the, the arrows. And so a transitions has a, a source, a source uh, place, a destination place, a behavior. So it's a color in the graphical notation and uh, a function, so a callback function. Uh, and in the function, you are going to actually uh, uh, call uh, the code. So uh, installing things, uh, uh, pulling some Docker images, etc. You can even, in a, in a function, call a, an Ansible playbook if you want, or anything. And finally, you also define the set of ports. So we have two use ports in this example, and you uh, give uh, the group uh, of places concerned by uh, this port. And we have one provide port in this example, which is uh, bound to the running site. Now we have the second part of the, of the tool, which is uh, uh, how we... Uh, assemble or compose those, uh, those uh, life cycles. And this is typically done by the DevOps engineer. So it's, like, it's a bit more like writing a playbook. So you, you have writing a role, which is usually done in Ansible by developers. And you can write playbooks, which is more or less uh, the equivalent of the reconfiguration language in Concert. So the language is quite simple. You have six types of instructions. You, you can add or remove a component instance. You can connect or disconnect uh, components. You can uh, ask a component to um, apply a behavior. And you can wait for a component to finish applying behaviors. So I will give you uh, two examples to illustrate how Concerto works uh, in practice. So um, the DevOps will uh, write uh, this kind of uh, program with the six instructions uh, I've uh, presented before. So for instance, here we are going to have a program to deploy a server and a database uh, from scratch. So what uh, the DevOps writes, for instance, is uh, I will add a server of type server, add a database of type, type database, okay. I will connect the server and the database uh, by their compatible ports. So in this case, two, two ports have to be uh, connected. The two pairs of ports have to be connected. And then I will say, OK, uh, server, I would like you to, to install, which is the green behavioral interface of the server. Uh, and this will uh, push the green behavior in a, a, a queue of behavior at the level of the component. And then I say, OK, push uh, uh, in the database uh, component the behavior deploy. So it's the green. Uh, it's also green in this example. And these instructions, the push behavior, are um, unblocking instructions. So both. Uh, components will try to apply their uh, behaviors in a concurrent manner until their ports require some synchronization. So the DevOps simply writes this uh, example of program 
And the rest that I will present, so the execution, is of course automated uh, by Concerto. You, you do not have to do anything uh, as a user except writing this program. So what will happen is that each component will try to apply the green transition simultaneously. Uh, if I have two transitions uh, starting from a given place, then the two transitions will be executed in parallel. And, uh, sorry. And uh, when uh, I have a, a merge of two parallel branches, I will have to wait that both branches are finished before reaching uh, the next place. Okay. And uh, uh, this is not, wait, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, and in this example, uh, I cannot reach the running place uh, for the server. Uh, because I need the database to be running to do that. Because this sub part of the lifecycle has a dependency on the database service. But as soon as the database is reaching the running place, which means, which also means that the database ends its deployment behavior, then the port is activated. And so the server will be able to continue and uh, finally deploy. So this is an example of uh, an automated coordination with Concerto. And the idea is that we have a lot of parallelism because, because we have concurrency between the execution of both uh, life cycles, but also uh, internal parallelism because of parallel transitions. This is why we, we have a, a, such uh, interesting execution types. So another example, now, okay, we have the database and the server running, and I would like to maintain uh, my uh, database. Uh, so I will say as a DevOps, uh, okay, uh, push in the database the maintenance uh, behavior and then deploy again to go back to a running state. And for the server, I will need to suspend it and then deploy again. So why do I need to suspend the server? It's because the server is using the database. And in this example, uh, I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot uh, st stop, well, stop, uh, maintain the database while it is used. Uh, and so how uh, this is executed by Concerto. So um, the database will not be able to apply the blue behavior until this uh, service port is not used anymore. So this is a kind of a security, right, uh, of the coordination. And as soon as uh, the server leave, leaves the group that is using the database, then the port will be deactivated and the database will be able to uh, make the maintenance and then uh, we do again the deployment as uh, I've shown before. So this is the part about uh, Concerto. And now I will uh, talk a bit about choreographies and how we, we made an evolution of Concerto to do that. Um, but maybe you have questions before moving uh, to choreographic uh, aspects. No questions? OK. So um, if you remember in the introduction, I've talked about uh, uh, the third motivation, uh, which was to have a decentralized uh, infrastructure as code. Um, so uh, why, uh, why would, you, would we like to have a decentralized uh, coordination? Uh, of the life cycles. So, uh, of course, you have uh, lots of advantages when having a, a centralized uh, approach. But you also have some limitations. And uh, uh, one of them is that um, when you need to execute a plan, like in Concerto, for instance, or any other language, um, you need to know the state of the system. You need to know uh, where if I uh, say it with the concerto words, you need to know where are the, the 
the tokens in the system uh, to, to coordinate well uh, the execution. Um, and sometimes building a, a, a full state uh, of the system is impossible or difficult or unwanted. So for instance, it is unwanted when you have cross DevOps organizations. So for instance, uh, uh, when you have multiple DevOps teams handling a sub part of the infrastructure and you do that to actually not build uh, uh, a global state of your system because it's too complex, too difficult to do that. You also have this problem when you have frequent network disconnections to have a consistent view of your global state or frequent faults, uh, or you may have uh, difficulties to, do, to, to have a global state because of the scale of the system. Um, the other problem is that if you have a central coordination of um, deployment, deployments and uh, maintenance, then you have a single point, point of failure, meaning that if the central coordinator is unavailable, then you cannot do anything, even a simple local action. So, um, in the literature, what is called a choreography, uh, is actually a, a central uh, coordination program of uh, a system uh, explaining uh, what are the interactions between autonomous ag agents. So it's like uh, when you're dancing uh, and you follow a choreography. So the choreography uh, has been written by a, a, a responsible entity and is uh, written in a centralized fashion. But each participant of the choreography uh, will have uh, what is called a local projection of the choreography, meaning uh, the set of local actions to perform uh, to respect the choreography. And so, of course, uh, the decentralized execution of uh, the local projections uh, for each agent must be equivalent to the initial choreography specification. So this is what is called a, a choreography. So <clears throat> we have um, worked on uh, what we call concert to a D, so decentralized. Uh, so it's a, a language that is very close to concerto, actually it's an extension of concerto that makes possible local projections of a centralized concerto program. So here is an example of a program, a centralized concerto program to update uh, the master nodes of a, a Galera cluster of MariaDB uh, database. So we have instructions. So we interrupt the master, we update the master, we interrupt the worker uh, and update with the worker. We deploy again the master. We wait for the interruption of the master to be applied before deploying again the worker. And uh, in Concerto D, what we will have is uh, our uh, local projections on each node. So for the master, you will have, uh, OK, I, I have to interrupt the master to update the master and deploy the master again. And from the worker side, I will have to interrupt, update, wait for the interruption of the master to be finished, and deploy again the worker. These are the local projection of this centralized program. Uh, and the idea is that Concerto D will automatically handle uh, the set of communications required to decentrally execute those local proje projections. Um, so, uh, we need communications in a, a few different uh, uh, cases, so four, four different cases, actually. Uh, so, when we have a completion of a disconnection operation between components uh, hosted on different agents, uh, when a behavior is uh, handing, because of wait instruction, we have to communicate that, when a port is activated or deactivated. So to give you an example, 
so here it's the same example than before with uh, uh, this program. Okay, so we have a master MariaDB component and a worker MariaDB component. And we are at the stage where the master uh, ends the interrupt updates and deploy again. So he, the master is in its running state. Uh, and as uh, reaching the running state, the master will have to inform the worker that uh, the service port is activated. So a message will automatically be communicated by using concert.od between the master node and the worker node so that the worker node is informed that it can continue the deployment execution. So now I will move to uh, the declarative choreographies uh, that we try to achieve with the tool that is called Ballet. So as a reminder, so you remember uh, in many DevOps solutions, we try to achieve a declarative uh, approach because we do not want the DevOps to write plans or to write uh, these kind of programs, which are error prone and very difficult when you have very large infrastructures or systems. Um, Okay, so it means you have no human res no uh, human responsible for writing the central uh, consultor program. But we want to go even further because we would like to directly compute uh, the local projections written in concertod in a decentralized manner. So it means we would like to have a decentralized plan planner. So compute the plan in a decentralized manner to reach uh, the set of local projections written in concerto D directly. Um, and for the same reason, wh why do we want to have a decentralized uh, uh, planner? Uh, well, the same reasons that, than uh, before. So uh, you have difficulties to build a, a global consistent state of the system or the infrastructure in some cases. Uh, you may want to avoid sing single point of failure that may block the whole system uh, when uh, the, the planner is unavailable. And you also have um, uh, scalability issues in the case of the plan because a, a plan computation is a, an optimization problem because you have a lot of different possible plans and you have to choose the best one according to some metrics. So it is uh, usually uh, an incomplete uh, problem. And so it does not scale at all. So uh, taking smaller decisions with a few additional communications is probably more efficient uh, at scale. OK, so uh, this is the overview of Ballet. So the idea is that, uh, um, so in this uh, figure, I focus on the cross-functional uh, or cross-geographical DevOps organization. But this could be also true for edge uh, sites, for instance. Um, so the idea is that we have, for instance, two DevOps teams working on a subpart, a different subpart of the infrastructure. And uh, each DevOps team uh, can submit uh, a maintenance uh, uh, goal, a maintenance target. Uh, to a front end. And the idea is to avoid, uh, hopefully entirely, human exchanges between the DevOps teams. So to do that, we need uh, first to build a global knowledge on the source of the, uh, of the maintenance, but this is a, a d details. We, I will not go uh, into this. Uh, this component because it's not very interesting from a scientific viewpoint. But I also need a decentralized planner, meaning that if this DevOps submits, uh, uh, well, ask for uh, a maintenance operation, uh, this planner will be responsible for uh, sending some messages to other planners to see if other over parts of the infrastructure are impacted by this maintenance and need to uh, locally apply uh, some uh, some actions. Uh, 
And finally, I will use uh, concert 2D to have a decentralized execution uh, of the overall uh, uh, choreography. So we've used a, a case study, which is a multi-site, uh, an open stack multi-site case. Uh, so we have a, a cluster of, uh, well, a Galera cluster of MariaDB uh, database to handle the Keystone uh, uh, authentication service. And in each site, uh, we will have uh, two no three nodes. So the worker nodes for the database parts, the Nova node and neutral node, and the same for each side. Um, so from a developer uh, viewpoint, it's the same as in Concerto. So the developers of the pieces of software will have to write uh, the control components of their, uh, of their component, of their service. Uh, and from a DevOps uh, viewpoint, so it's uh, quite different because now the DevOps do not have to write a concerto program, but uh, can simply express uh, a goal. So what we call a goal. So for instance, this is an example of a goal where I say, well, I would like the component MariaDB master to apply an update. And I would like in the end to have all my components running. Uh, so the language is, is quite small, but uh, you can express uh, things like that. So on uh, behaviors, on components, and on uh, ports. So why is it difficult to uh, um, automatically generate the set of concert 2D programs, so local projections, from this kind of goal? Is because uh, mainly because uh, we need to introduce waiting instructions at the right places. So it is some kind of a scheduling problem, actually, in the literature. And this is the same example as before, but without the waiting instruction at uh, the worker side. And in the worst case, uh, without the waiting instruction, we can imagine that the worker is able to actually execute the free uh, behaviors locally before the master uh, made the, its update. So in this case, the worker is uh, uh, deploying again, and the master is uh, the worker is deploying again, and the master is blocked because it can no no longer leave uh, its uh, deployed state because the port is used. So this is why uh, we need a complex. Uh, a solution to to solve this problem and of course this complexity is due to the complexity of concerto itself so you do not have such complexity if you have a simple turn off turn on turn off life cycle uh, so to do that uh, we have a solution so i will not give you too much details but we have a solution with a uh, different steps so the first step is to compute a local a uh, solution for the component concerned by the initial goal uh, request. So for instance, for MariaDB master, I will compute that I need to interrupt, update, and deploy to do that, because I need to update, and I need to go back to my running state. To update, I need to interrupt, then update, then deploy again. And by doing that, what is going to happen is that my ports will move from activate it to deactivate it. And so I will need to send some messages to a neighbor node saying, OK, uh, the components that are using the master service must disconnect until the interruption of the master ends. So a message uh, uh, expressing this kind of uh, information. And this message will be sent to the neighbors, so um, the MariaDB workers. Then MariaDB workers will probably say, OK, uh, if the service is, in, is uh, not uh, offered anymore, then I need to interrupt and send themselves the information to their neighbors, etc. And so we have a kind of a gossip protocol uh, to propagate uh, the, the ports, deactivation, or any useful information to the neighbors. 
So in the end, when we reach the leaves of the, of the, the tree, then we have a, an acknowledgement phase. And finally, we take into account all the messages that we received to enrich the way we are solving the problem locally and then do a final local resolution in the end. Um, so we've made some experiments, of course, uh, with uh, one, two, five, and ten sites of uh, OpenStack. Um, and uh, all artifacts are available in Zenodo. And um, we compared ourselves to uh, an academic solution that has been implemented on top of Pulumi. So it's called Muse. And it offers a decentralized uh, declarative uh, approach also. Uh, so in terms of execution time, we win 40% uh, of uh, execution time compared to news on a deployment of a multi-site open stack and 25% uh, on the update phase. And what is interesting is that you can see that the planning phase is actually uh, negligible compared to the execution phase. So as a reminder, both planning and execution are performed in a decentralized manner. And to give you an idea of the, the work that we have avoided uh, to the DevOps, different DevOps teams uh, uh, is the number of constraints that we inferred and sent to oversights and the number of instructions in the, in the programs. So for instance, for the update, which is the most important one, we inferred 200 constraints, uh, 100 instructions, and we have to exchange uh, about 80 messages between sites. So as a conclusion, uh, so I've presented the first concerto, which is a, a coordination language for deployment and reconfiguration of complex systems or infrastructures. Uh, Concerto makes explicit the dependencies between uh, interfaces of, uh, of uh, software entities. Um, and the reconfiguration language of Concerto uh, makes possible uh, modification in the assembly of components and uh, in the behaviors of uh, each component. And Concerto offer an automated and safe coordination. Concerto D is a decentralized coordination language. So it's the decentralized version of Concerto. And it offers a way uh, to handle choreography, uh, choreographic infrastructure as code, if I, I can say, uh, by projecting a, a Concerto prog program, which is centralized uh, uh, on uh, different agents. And the communications will be handled automatically and safely by Concerto D. And finally, Ballet is on top of Concerto D and offers a decentralized declarative approach. So it offers a small uh, language to express uh, uh, the, the goal of reconfiguration. And uh, a decentralized plan uh, will be, well, a plan will be the set of uh, Concerto D programs will be computed in a decentralized manner. And in all contributions I've presented, the focus uh, is made on uh, reducing the execution time and also uh, offering automatic and safe solutions. So of course, uh, I've done that with a lot of uh, people. Uh, so in no particular order, I will not name all of them, uh, but of course uh, I did not work alone. Um, Regarding uh, uh, ongoing work, so we are trying to integrate some concepts and results of Concerto into existing infrastructure as code tools uh, like Ansible and Terraform. But uh, as it is already five, uh, I will I will end uh, my talk. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you for doing the uh, the presentation. I think we have a question. Uh, 
yes, from Tengfei, maybe? If you're speaking, you're still on mute. Or maybe you wanted to upload. Oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning that part of the tool. So we have a question from Guillaume. Guillaume? I cannot hear you very well. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. I can hear you. Can you? Hello? Yes. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, yes, nice. So, yes, I, I had a question about uh, it was a very, very interesting talk. And thank, you. thank you very much. And um, uh, I think it could be very useful in Kubernetes operators. So, do you have plans with? Uh, Mixing concerto with uh, with uh, operators, many operators that can uh, get any uh, any kind of replication. Well, uh, not really. Uh, well, I, I do not play, plan to apply uh, what I've presented today to Kubernetes because Kubernetes ecosystem is a bit complex and also have very different approach than concerto in the sense that. It does not care at all about dependencies. It will be more a retry approach. Um, but I'm working uh, with, uh, uh, so thank Faye Han, uh, who is present today, and over colleagues um, on the self-stabilization of uh, Kubernetes controllers, but it does not involve uh, results that I've presented today about concert. OK, thank you. Do we have any other questions? I think Jolan had a question before. And um, thank you also, but... But maybe they were trying to upload. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think it was okay. really interesting, especially as you're taking the approach from a centralized configuration and and moving it to decentralized. And um, mm -hmm. I also really liked the uh, the data points in terms of the uh, the parallel operations. Um, have you also tested error scenarios when something in the uh, in that mm, yeah. is not working out? Good question. Yeah, no, unfortunately, no. So um, we have some kind of uh, switch uh, in consortium. So we can say, for instance, uh, if uh, this port is unavailable, then do this or do that. But we don't have, for instance, uh, exception uh, uh, expressivity. Uh, and for now, we do not have an automated uh, way of uh, rolling back if, uh, if some uh, actions are not possible, for instance. Uh, this could be an extension of, uh, of Consorto. For now, what we can do is uh, stopping the reconfiguration and uh, uh, starting a new one to hopefully reach back uh, a previous state. So kind of rewriting the actions that yes. happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Um, if You're there, welcome. If there are no more questions, then... Um, Thank you for, for, for doing the presentation. And I'm just going to check if there's anyone here who would like to stay to have conversations about edge-related items. I did see David 
Patterson, who I mentioned at the very beginning, joining, but I think he had to drop in the meantime. Uh, he's part yeah. of the uh, the Edge Computing Group. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think all of us are in IA members. So, <laughs> oh, good. Um, no worries. But it was nice. Thanks a lot for the invitation. And uh, as it is recorded, hopefully some people will watch uh, the video afterwards. No, of course. Like uh, I, I'm really uh, sad that Rob Hirschfeld couldn't make it today because um, he, his company, he and his company are working a lot in the area of infrastructure as code. So um, it would have been a great conversation. Um, as he could he could share his uh, his experience in in this area mm. and yeah. compare what he but did. if needed uh, i can connect to a future working group and okay have a discussion about this it's okay that would be great i will i will check that with the group in terms of when people are available available to do that um i will share also the recording um once we um drop from the call and it finishes the the processing um, my laptop is about to melt down right now <laughs> um and yeah i i will make it available to everyone and then i will send the link to it to you as well so um so you have have it handy if you would like to share with with others as well and i'll i'll let you know um what the group's plans are and i'm hoping that there will be an opportunity to have a have further conversation about the about the talk and the okay great yeah. all right then uh, thank so you. thanks a lot bye <laughs> thank See you, you for joining have a good rest yeah. of your day bye bye, bye.